fans probably have that Unicorns of Love gift from I am Oakland ready to go. The manager trolling EU better than A. But here we go. Rengar and Cinder are going to be the first two things taken off the table. So Giants still showing that respect to Team Liquid. Or more specifically to Rainover and getting that out of the jungle. And he's always been a Rengar player. You know, more the tank Rengar. We saw it from him at All Star as well. So we shouldn't be surprised. The respect is being shown. Looks like a strong pick at all style. It's the full tank build rather than, say, an AD stacking build. But regardless, Rengar's sent on the powerful end ever since his rework, so it shouldn't be a surprise to Bandit. Okay, now we there start we to get into the intricacies of today's matches because Orianna certainly is in the discussion for top mids, but it's not Ryze, it's not Syndra, it's not LeBlanc who we see now banned from Team Liquid. And it's like, okay, what of those mids left? You're probably not going to see the Talia that Samsung was playing, but now suddenly the right, the Cassiopeia goes way up. Knight is very known as a Cassiopeia aficionado. Uh, you might even have to see something like that first picked or ban kind of continuing this mid lane priority because where does the rise fall? Given that we saw Team Liquid not pick or ban it, where does it fall here? Because Giants could snap it up and maybe Golden Glow's kind of got over his jitters from his first match on this lineup as willing to take it again. This is information we don't have complete. Yep, you can see though, Olaf gonna be the final ban here from Giants Gaming. Rainover has been running over people in that Dark Passage series with that champion, so. And this is really smart also, Achilles, because Team Liquid was happy to give over Lee Sin and take Olaf as the counterfeit. Olaf does outduel Lee Sin most of the game, especially in the first nine levels with the ability to hit those axes and chase down even after the ward jump. Final ban of Ash means that Lee Sin is available. Rainover hasn't shown priority, but I guess overall it would just be a Lee Sin versus Rek'Sai battle, you'd have to imagine. Let's we'll see what Giants want to do. What they want to pick up here for their first pick. Could right. be, could just be the Rek'Sai take away from Rainover. Very strong pick in the jungle. I actually recommend, I would like to see the Cassiopeia just because that would kind of require Team Liquid to consider the rise into it. And then it might be a blocker given how poorly the game work went earlier to actually be forced to go against uh, the Cassiopeia as Rise after getting kind of schooled earlier in the day. So I like that as an idea, but Lee Sin obviously very much on the high end of the power. And then there's things like Thresh that's been frequently banned. You know, they can just yeah. not give away any information. The Nautilus takeaway, you know Team Liquid will drop Nautilus in the first rotation. And very interesting. They don't respect Rainover going off on Lee Sin, and they're just going to take the Rek'Sai and just kind of see what's in. And predictably, I was talking about it, Cassiopeia party goes up, and you knew the Nautilus would come there. So, so far, this is very much indicative of today's meta with these two teams. Yeah, and I mean, Team Liquid is showing in that, you know, in that series against Dark Passage, they did, uh, albeit, you know, playing against uh, arguably a weaker opponent than Giants Gaming. Okay. They did... Arguably is maybe, you know, putting it a bit lightly. I'm, I'm trying to be nice here. Uh, but... Uh, they did correct a lot of the, the big flaws that they had in their series against the Giants in that best of one, which was the, the roaming from uh, Golden Glue. He was joining in the team fights more quickly. Uh, and then Lorlo with the teleports was very much on point. So, you know, they identified that those were two big key factors that were kind of holding them back uh, and restricting them because the Rise had done no damage in that series. And with Golden Glue arriving in the team fights, it really helped them stomp out those games. But it is tricky to draw too much inference from Dark Passage. Dark Passage kind of waved the white flag pretty early in all three of their games. So sure, Team Liquid under low pressure was doing the right things. You can expect that with good mechanical players even on a new lineup. Giants is going to be a very different beast. So let's see if we can echo those comments about this series because it's very much a best of three with a look to the past, but also a look to the future for both these teams. They're going to look to be you know, coming up through the middle towards the top of the table in EU and NALCS respectively. Well, next two picks here for Giants going to be that Jin coming in with Ash Band. It's the most logical pick that they would go to. It's been very popular uh, in a lot of these scrims down here. And now Poppy, of course, in the top lane. That's a no-brainer. Nothing really shown here. We're expecting it to be Nautilus versus Poppy, but always the chance that Matt will flex the Nautilus into bot. I was actually speaking to Fischio about the Nautilus flexing. So obviously, the LCK All-Stars were doing this a lot back at, uh, you know, at the All-Star event last week. And... You know, there is a bit of a question mark over how powerful Nautilus support can really be. Still is very telegraphed, still does walk up in melee range, pop a shield. And yes, okay, if he gets an auto attack, gets more of a shield, but he's not a lane dominant support. And Piglet, three seconds in. Are they going to go for a double gambit here? Looks like they are, and this is interesting to see. So right. Rainover is actually going to take his carry pants on and go for the Hecarim. He's not going to take the Lee Sin. So good prediction there from Giants, but... Hecarim is the pick. We talked about right at the start of the first day that Hecarim was coming back into the meta. Deals with the AoE clears on Raptors and also the Krug super, super well. 
and is another great initiation champion, but Piglet is playing with fire. He already was punished once for the vein pick, and there still is Cassiopeia on the board, so we might see the same scenario once again. Actually, no, no, no. Cassiopeia is taken away. My apologies. Yeah, so I, I think that that's why they are comfortable to go back to this pick with the Ash taken off the table. You don't have to worry about the, the arrows, which means that you don't have to burn the, uh, burn the tumble. And then the Petrifying Gaze is not there to lock down the vein, so it looks like they're going to be uh, you know, more comfortable going into this matchup. There's still the Poppy with the Keeper's Verdict that they have to be uh, you know, concerned about, though. But the only tech they really can take in this last round is the Zyra, who, of course, does have very good trade harass, will do a good job in lane. But the Victor obviously isn't going to get near Vayne, ideally in a game where it's even. It's very hard to walk up as Victor onto the Vayne. And yeah, well scouted out. The Cassiopeia taken away. A lot of the punishing picks for team uh, for Giants to draft against Vayne are gone. And now we're waiting for the last pick. Could be a top lane pick. Could also be a support. Waiting to see where the Nautilus is going. I wonder, I'm curious if Matt has been practicing at all the, uh, you know, the Misfortune support to run into this Zyra. I don't know if it's in his wheelhouse at all, but... Uh, could be a you know very heavy harass lane to run into the Zyra Jin combo. I don't know if it's enough peel for specifically the uh, Vayne, so that's why I think it's a little bit tricky to pull off there. Like Thresh could definitely be drafted here. They have a lot of damage from the jungle. Hecarim does do a lot of damage if he gets tanky. Karma's risky. Obviously, Karma. This is an all-in lane, kind of like Vayne Janna, Vayne Karma. Shield lanes with Vayne either go very very well or very very poorly. Jin's been toned down because lethality is not as cost-effective a, a uh, purchase as armor penetration was. We're wondering what lanes Vayne can get through, and uh, the Jin part of things might be manageable, but the Zyra might pull it off the edge. So a lot of intrigue here around specifically the 2v2, because every time you see Vayne drafted, you wonder, can you get away with the Vayne? Because late game Vayne, everyone knows she can mow down the tanks that define the meta right now. Yeah, I mean, we saw Piglas doing his damnedest to get through that poppy, get through that Rek'Sai. Uh, the first time around, wasn't able to do so. So, gonna take another stab at it this time with a different roster of champions coming through. So we're gonna get ready to go ahead and load up onto the Rift. Yeah, better scenario here for that Vayne. Because the Cassipi is off the board, you have to like it more, but we're gonna get wind a window of information here. Can you pick the Vayne when you don't have 100% information? Can you take it, not last pick? That's what we're kind of find out during the course of this game. Yep. Well. Rain over. Certainly going to be looking to pop off on that Hecarim. Let's go ahead, load up onto the Rift for our first game of this best of three. Winner moves on to Gyeonggi this weekend. And welcome to Summoner's Rift. See both of these teams yet again fanning out, going for a five point. Nothing too cheeky gonna be coming out here. It's a lot on the line. And none of these teams wanna put that to risk. And both these teams, you know, it always is a risk to show your lineup before they can really gestate. These are players who have only played together for a short time. Rainover only reunited with the squad after all starts around the same time that I flew back into the country. There was only so much time that Rainover could get here, so I imagine they're running on just a handful of scrims experience at this point. Took out Dark Passage, that part was predictable. Giants eked ahead of them the last time we saw this and did look superior. Now it's their fourth game of the set. Now they're going to kind of have some of those tendencies down. We've seen the day meta really evolve, and this is kind of the next point is, what about carry junglers for Rainover? Because we know he can play the Rek'Sai. Compass. We know that he can cover strong lanes. We're still not 100% convinced on Golden Glue and Laurel and how they'll flow into Rainover's playstyle. And now we're seeing Rainover throw a curveball and go for more of the carry style. Yeah, I mean, he's been, uh, you know, kind of bordering on that with the Olaf, at least the way that he's been playing it, uh, really just getting up uh, in faces and wrecking them with his axes. But uh, this is going to be a whole other animal with this Hecarim. But, I mean, the, the tools there with that ultimate is going to be the Onslaught of Shadows to disrupt upset during the curtain ball is going to be excellent. It's very interesting to see Rek'Sai starting blue. You almost never see a Rek'Sai start on the blue side. 
We've got a leash from the Poppy who will exit lane for us. I imagine this is so that Giants can really set up the bot lane to potentially punish the Vayne. You never want to be in a scenario where you don't get level 2 over Vayne because then she gets access to Tumble. And, um, you know, for example, the Condemn and can actually start to win trades. You need to control this bot lane if you are the Giants. So I think that's actually pretty smart. It's, it's a big adaptation. It means you won't have that blue buff to hand over to the Victor. Suddenly, Victor really does need to stay in lane until 1250 gold because he doesn't have the, the uh, blue buff to just spam out two E's every rotation and kind of get through the laning phase pre-first hex core. But it isn't going to be a cheese gank up top. It is very much just... I can't afford to have my bot lane leash for me, therefore I'm going to start top lane. Yeah. And I mean, I think that, you know, saying that they have to control this bottom lane, uh, especially in this matchup, is just pretty indicative of like how you should beat TL in general because they always focus around this bottom lane. So if you can control that, if you can control Piglet, get upset ahead, then that should spell success for you, as long as Rainover can't just run over every other lane. But then kind of the hope is, right, where do Lorlo and Golden Glue fall on that? Because if Golden Glue can actually come through as a carry threat like he has been from time to time, specifically in the challenger scene, then it gives a new dimension. If you just know can't bot, take away Team Liquid's chance of win, it makes them predictable. It makes it very easy to prep against them. So we're very much looking for the next step for specifically Golden Glue as Lorlo is actually coming out very much the dog on these trades with Poppy. Yeah, we see him going quite low, both of them using up two of those charges, but here's Rainover. But uh, W comes up from Poppy. Still get a little bit of damage in. Uh -oh. oh, actually, the dredge line lands. He has to burn the flash. Rainover will take a turret shot, and that knocks him down, so he's going to have to recall. But that's still going to be good to get that flash away from Flashix. And then you saw Piglet on your screens having to recall. That's what happens when you can prep the lane completely ideally for Giants against that main. Oh, Mac now Mac. rooted. Deadly Flourish. The plants are there. Oh. Flash forward and upset. Going to get him with a last shot. Now Matt needed to respect the amount of bullets that were in the chamber. He had the crit up. A normal auto attack would not have taken him down. Back's just playing with fire and top. Oh, yeah. Last minute Ooh. shot would have done it. That was actually the damage over time from the level 1 W. It took him down to oh, yeah. 20 health. That was uh, a little too close for comfort, I'm sure. Now Mighty Bear coming into the mid lane looking for Golden Blue. He's going to flash in. Golden flashing back away. Yeah, one more smack in with that red buff, but it's not going to be enough to take him down. But, but isn't it just crazy that something that, you know, might be missed if you're not focusing on it, the blue buff start for Rek'Sai has completely warped the bot lane. They thought they were comfortable enough in the matchup to take it down, but just through sheer wave manipulation and not having leash duties, the whole bot lane changed in identity right after the game had started. Piglet and Matt are caught off guard. One has to back early. The other one is killed. No flash now on the Karma. Suddenly can't be the one-man laning phase that Vayne really needs to baby her through it. And this game, very, very intriguing already. Yeah, and I mean, this is going to be a massive imbalance in the bottom lane. Piglet's already been having I mean, look, the lane's pushing a, as well. a rough enough time here, but now it's going to be a serrated Dirk, Doran's Blade, Jin up against the Doran's Blade call of the Vayne. I'm not a big fan of serrated Dirk uh, at this present point, although... Oh boy, Piglet. Rooted yet again. Matt's going to go forward, try to trade Full back shot. some damage. Gets the tether in. Upset, not going to find that fourth grit. One to Piglet, but he will get the grenade and another bullet in anyway, so he still trades back a decent bit of damage. Let's confirm if you're tuning in late. It is 623, same patch as All Stars. So serrated Dirk no longer is the fight armor penetration, so I actually like more long swords. A four long swords, if you can fit it in, I think is always superior to the serrated Dirk. Honestly, Caulfield's Warhammer, a couple of long swords, and then just actually finishing the whole item to me is the most power, most bang for your buck. So I'm not a huge fan of rushing the serrated Dirk. But, hey, a four armor penetration on the very squishy Vayne is enough to secure a kill, then worth is worth, right? Dude, you can see Upset and Hustler not worried about playing this far up at all. Still chunking out Piglet, now a 10 CS lead coming in. He'll be able to answer back a few of those with the minions crashing into the turret, but now looking at mid lane, it's going to be the gravity well coming down. Knight has to flash away, the poison not ticking on him anymore, so he will make it out alive, but that's both summoners down. Yeah, Knight tried to be really confident, didn't want to use both summoners, but even with the Negatron Cloak, took massive damage in that trade, as we see. Predictably, Vayne is struggling through lane phase. This only matters if they take the turret or if they get multiple kills. If Vayne exits lane, even 20 CS behind them, it's Cull, so the payoff for Vayne is always there as a champion, with the Cull will be even larger. They've got to keep this up, but they're going to be overextending, and Rainover is closing in on level 6. Piglet holding on for dear life. It's going to be 
a couple CS behind at this point. I mean, game Granted, it is skewed a little bit because of those plants, so we don't really know how many lanes he has. Behind, but, oh, Golden Glue coming down to the river. He's going to get taken out. Rain over. Still not having that level six. Still going to be able to take out Upset to find an answering kill. That one out of context but, was a bit weird. Yeah, a little confusing as to why Golden Glue is placing himself there. Gets caught, but at least Rainover is there to pick up the pieces. Unfortunately, no assist going to be coming in for Piglet or we'll Matt. We'll get a replay, I'm sure, to just determine what was happening there. I guess he could have been baiting for Rainover, who might have already been level six if he was five. Ah, oh, he was picking up the he was picking up the the, uh, honey fruit. the honey fruit in the lane and just got burst. That's the thing that okay. Cyrus support can do. <laughs> it looked like he rolled down the river while he was already. At a low HP, but here he was just taking a lot of damage. Rainover, speaking of taking damage, Mighty Bear oh, trying to get to his tunnel system, not going to be able to do it. Rainover does have to take the kill in the end. Helicopters his way to that killing blow. It has to confirm it, but Piglet now getting rooted, going to get hit by that deadly flourish, takes a hell of a lot of damage from these plants, and he's going to have to back off yet again. A bit absent minded, though, of Giants just not respect the fact that Rainover could be bot lane. Level 6 was observed for him earlier. Not sure if they spotted that, but regardless, put to good use, and they really wanted to give the kill to Piglet. It looked like Reno that uh, looked like sorry, Night Mighty Bear was going to get through the tunnel, so it had to be clipping him with the Q. So Reno had to pick up the kill. But anything they can do to help Piglet towards his completed item deal, it's going to be the Shiv and Infinity Edge, which is very much the new Vein build, even after the Blade of the Ruin King tweaks. But anything to get him through the early game is uh, exactly what Team Liquid needs. So. Anyway, see so a bit of a shaky uh, turnaround here against Flaxish in the top lane as Lorlo has started to really command the trades on that Nautilus and is currently up in CS, denying a full wave as well as the Poppy does not have the teleport ability. I mean, I could say that he's gone double laning items though. Uh, so he's very much gonna be a bit delayed on his first item completion, or at least to the inevitable Spirit Visage and Sunfire Core that these tank top laners are so well known for. But yep, yeah, I mean, obviously 10 CS up, not gonna be massive, but is enough to dwell on, and it's only you know 13 CS for the Jin. So even though it felt like Jin was dominating, has some good buys for sure. But uh, if it only stays at this touching distance for the vein, it's very very much par for the course for Piglet. Oh boy, speaking of which, Piglet, Root not going to come through. Deadly flourish, not going to hit, but that's a curtain call. He flashes one, dodges the second, third will hit, has to heal for the fourth. Piglet will make it out alive. Teleport up for Lorelo is for Flax as well. No teleports used or invested in that situation. We'll try and pop, pop apart and stay in. Yeah, just this constant onslaught of abilities coming at him. He's burning both of those summary spells. Bit of a rough patch here for him as he gets about halfway to stacking that call up. So the playstyle that made Vayne so successful way back when, now uh, you remember the days of the purple build, like the Ruin King and Yoma's Ghost Blade, was about getting early turrets, you know, back in the lane swap meta especially, and then parking someone you couldn't deal with in the side lane, and basically assassinating people that walked up, you know, camping the brush, assassinating people. Doesn't have the wave clear to deal with things, because Rainover's come back oh again. Oh boy, Exhaust coming out on the upset. He's going to get rooted by the Zyra, but dashes forward with the Onslaught of Shadow, so that's going to be a third kill coming through for Rainover, 100%. Of TL's kills going over onto him. Piglet going low. Mighty Bear still coming in, but he has to respect. Uh -oh. oh, we're going to have to get a replay of that one. Has to respect the two silver bolts, but never mind. Syrah is going to start popping off. Hustling, barely walking away with his life. Finding a double kill as he takes out the bottom lane of TL. We'll have to get a replay of both of these events as uh, we kind of missed out on those, but Golden Glue coming up big in the mid lanes. Let's take a look at this. Well, this is very oh. much him getting priority in the mid lane. No defensive wars down for, uh, for Knight. He wants his. Go for a casual stroll to the bot lane through the jungle and was assassinated. We also missed in the transition. Oh. Aggressive flash into very nice stuff. Hustlin crucially doesn't die. We've got two 3 0 members. In fact, a 3 0 1 on the side of Giants, but the kill distribution is certainly not ideal. If you get early kills on Hackerim, the standard build of skipping over jungle item and rushing Trinity Force means you can get damage and tankiness on the relatively low budget income of the jungle. So, very important that Rainover, you know, it's Rainover a piglet really for gold on the side of TL, but Zyra, sure, will do decent damage. Sure, might be able to harass a bit stronger on the vein, but it's, it's not the ideal kill distribution that you want. You want to see upset with yeah. more of that gold. Yeah, for sure. So, 3 0 1. Uh, for the Zyra, Sorks boost already completed as that sights down and working towards that Frost Queens. Full mage time for this Zyra. Got all that extra gold. I'm sure we'll see a Leandri's and a Redemption coming out. 
I think I just skip the Leandris. I uh, sorry, skip the Redemption. Sorry, just go straight into damage. I think you need to just. You have such low base stats on Piglet. We already saw the build in earlier games. Will likely go pretty disrespectful in terms of lack of magic. Was just maybe a Hex Drinker. Crucially, of course, did not pick up a QSS in the last time we saw him on the vein. I think you just go full damage because I don't think you can fit in a redemption unless it's a late game redemption. I think you just power people down. You know, get very much into the upgraded Sightstone AP item and you know the Eye of the Watcher, I believe it is, and just pump out the damage from there. All right. Well, you can see Mighty's beginning to pump out the damage, going for that Tiamat. Feeling comfortable enough to just go for that. Maybe you know become that split push uh, threat potentially later on in the game. Eyes are on Rainover. We're looking at what, maybe a 16-minute Trinity Force. So, Ekram from there. You're overextended in any lane. You'll take a lot of punishment. And, of course, they've been overextended traditionally in bot lane, trying to get down this turret. So, getting the turret before Trinity Force is completed on the Hecarim is so important for Giants. And, yep, will be first brick. Yep, they go ahead and they get it. Now it's 2.1 thousand in their favor. Rainover coming up to the top side of the map. It's going to be the Keeper's Verdict. Nice! And nicely timed. Flaxus by Flaxus. That was super really good. good. On those Poppy Ultimates. In fact, this tournament in general, you know, I feel like a lot of those missed during LCK season, but these foreign teams have got their Poppy displacements. Oh, there. but here we go. That's going to be the dredge line coming in after the ultimate from the Nautilus. It's not going to turn, but yeah, Rainover actually going to oh, go low. Did. The last shot. Wow, what a turnaround. Flaxus just styling on Rainover and Lorlo, coming up with a solo kill in the 1v2. Now Golden Blue in a bad spot, gets a petrified gaze on Hustlin. He will go down to the turret, but they still get the Cassiopeia. <laughs> Zyra, of course, uh, picks yeah. up the kill credit though, Achilles. Four and one. Can, they can turn this into turret damage, they certainly will. It's a three to one advantage. Mancha doesn't seem to be up on Matt, will be up very soon. He's not hitting the minions either. They might be able to just finish this. So big, if they can force the vein to farm with no wow. turret somewhere on the map, there it is. Nice stuff, and crucially, T Teal haven't even taken the top turret. And hey, Piglet's got time and bot to pick up CS, but Vayne, famously, isn't going to push that lane too fast. Yeah, so this looked really good. Got the uh, got the ultimate coming through there to pop up into the dredge line, but Poppy does some damage. I mean, in fact, it's just known as a carry-minded player. Yasuo top, which he actually flashed in one of the earlier games, didn't lock in, has been going with the Poppy, but seems to have the same carry mindset. Not a lot of players would know their damage output as Poppy and just flash Q, trust in the mechanics. You know, if you flash and just get nothing out of that, you've wasted such an important engage tool. Really clean stuff from Flaxish. And going one for one, that's scenario while your team gets all the things. It's sure they traded kills, but got the turrets. Now two down. The gold lead is specifically a macro one for Giants with those two turrets and small 3,000 gold leads so far. Yep. And I mean, you know, having Hustlin get that kill in mid completely just doesn't even matter anymore because the turret went down for Giants. So now just really stretching that gold lead, 3.1 thousand. So just hacking on an extra 1k in a matter of a minute. Now Piglet goes to the only lane where he has a defensive turret to be able to cover. Only safe lane available for him. And of course, turret dives are a possibility. So running out of places for Vayne to farm, still looking for two items. Shiv, Infinity Edge look a really long way away at this point in the game. Yeah, Cole should be finished stacking though. I believe it's still uh, got... Nine. Nine CS. Okay. Yep. Watching right. it myself. So, pretty close. It's hard to see. When there's like, the, you know, any digit with a one, it's hard to see. Piglet, though. Taking a hell of a lot of damage yet again. Has to use the heal. Barely gets anything back for that. Yeah, upset. And uh, there he goes. He's going to have to peel back. And this might just be the third tier one tower going down in favor of Giants. And the ultimate only just came up, so wasn't able to channel it. Karma probably would have stopped all the bolts. Is that's going to... Oh, Keeper's Verdict does land on to Golden Glue. Boots him back. And that's going to be the end of that engagement. Giants are just free to take this turret up top. Oh, that's really good stuff from Giants. They're keeping the clock on. Even though they didn't kill Piglet, they got what they wanted. They got the turret. They'll keep pushing. The scaling is there for TL. Oh, right over, though. That's just find a, yeah, he's just going to find a solo kill. Die, though. Get some after the flash. And he'll just use the ultimate to exit over the wall underneath that tier two. So upset, not able to avenge the death of his support. But again, this is just all of the gold being poured onto Rainover and not really being shared with Piglet or Golden Glue. Just the one kill. I mean, granted, they have those assists. Piglet has one assist. But it's uh, not nearly the right allocation that you would want. Golden Glue's looking to turn that around, though. Flashes for Knight. Messing up his, but now here comes Mighty Bear. Going to help turn this. Golden Glue says, you know what? I have to go all in for oh, it. Gets it. the last Twin Fang, but can he make it out alive? 
It's not looking terribly likely, but Matt is there to back him up, throws a shield on him, gets him that movement speed, and Golden Glue will make it out with a solo kill. I mean, Nice is not respecting how far back in lane he needs to be. Sure, by the end of it, he's near his turret, but nice attempt by Golden Glue. Didn't even need to hit the stun. The damage from the uh, Petrifying Gaze is enough, and Knight tries to find range to get back in for some trades, but the one trade he made, the one power transfer, sped him up, but wasn't enough. There's more action, actually, on the Rift. Oh, yeah, Piglet getting jumped on yet again. Nowhere to go. Four members of Giants around him and Matt on the opposite side in the side of the top lane. And Piglet will go down for the second time this game. I was able to talk to a very noted vein picker at All Star. I was on the analyst desk with Double Lift. I'm like, okay, you know, everyone's talking up the vein, the win rate, just how well she does in solo queue. Is it there for competitive? And even though he's taken a step back, his Pearl of Wisdom was basically, it's a counter pick only. There are some lanes you can get through, but it just isn't strong enough to lane in a lot of scenarios. And generalizing here, we're seeing the same problems Vayne's already had. Rotating around the map, getting lots of turrets. What's Vayne doing? I guess she's slowly pushing in waves. No sign of Static Shiv yet. No sign of Infinity Edge yet. Now that build's so much more expensive. Before it was, I've got Blade of the Ruin King. You can't walk up to me. I'm going to chase you down and kill you. Now it's two items to really have any relevancy and it's, it's being exploited. Piglet has not achieved anything in this game, and it's one of those things where, is the ticking time bomb of late game vein worth it when you're getting bossed around this hard? It's not true for Nasus, and I remain to be convinced that it's true for, for the vein either. Hmm. Well, so far, not so good. Piglet still a little ways away from getting that Infinity Edge, getting that Static Shiv. You can see the zeal in the inventory. Pickaxe and the BF Sword, but Still needs a hell of a lot more gold before he can complete that. It's fallen behind about 30 CS. The hope here for TL is really about mistakes on the side of Giant, specifically in getting down Deep Vision with three outer turrets down. Shouldn't be getting these unanswered blue buffs. Should be taking things like Drake. Hasn't been a Drake taken this game at all. Giants need to keep up the pace. Very good with the rotations. Three turrets down around 15 minutes is really good stuff. But the next step, warding those camps taking those drakes, punishing TL for trying to play side lanes without any sort of coverage what they need to do, and this would be against the run of play. Yeah, we well, can see this. They start up the Dragon Raider over here, already down to 50%. The Flourish not going to connect, and Mighty Bear waiting over the wall. Looks like they're going to leash this out, but now the Curtain Call being opened up. Looking for Rain over. Matt going to have the Body Block. Piglet gets caught by the plants, jumps over the wall with the Glass Cone, and the Ocean Drake just going to be handed over to the Giants. We see that it's going to be a mountain coming up next in six minutes. I mean, it was an unrealistic start of the Drake there from TL. Now, if that is just so that he could have space to take top turret, then that would be the second oh, level shot point no. that might work. Raynov is going to find a friend right here. Oh, he's is not he? moving, yep, though. Yep, Very smartly just going to finish out the channel. Oh. If I cool don't move, as a cucumber. If I do, it's literally if I don't move, they can't see me. Predator rules apply. Back going to get his back delayed however and now giant starting to group up as a full five man in this bottom lane maybe looking for the first tier two see the tp coming in from behind but lorlo he's a ways away that's some gold between the teams but the trinity force hecarim is here they want the pick if they can get Jin or the victor this could be a one fight for oh, but that goes low and piglet's basically out of the fight rainover coming in the back it's on top of upset knocks him into half hp but rainover he's gonna go down hustling finding the kill yet again lorlo doing what to get this rated back piglet falls it's just golden nice. glue left oh. Dish out the damage. They do kill the victor, and upset is low. Can't move forward. Gold Blue pinned into the wall by Poppy. Still going low, but still alive. Still pushing out those poison damage. The Deadly Blur is not going to connect. He's able to find flashes. He's able to find Mighty Bear. There it is. Just about the aces. Hustling's the only one left. This plants finishing off Golden Glue, and now it's up to Matt and Lorlo to run down this Zyra. But I think that they can accomplish that with relative ease. Just run along the wall. There it is. One more attack. That's an ace in favor of Team Liquid, but they lost several members to accomplish it. And the big story here was the fact that Cassiopeia stayed alive, had mana, was able to tame it and turn around, because midway through this fight, you're like, all right, Giants, they're going to ice the game from here. They're going to get a couple of members. Two carries go down quickly. Rain over and Piglet. Korean viewer down. You're like, okay, Giants have got this, but they get greedy. They're disrespecting a full health Cassiopeia. Realistically, it's only Poppy going in for damage. There's no more range damage left to finish off Golden Glue. And the moment that Cassiopeia doesn't have to worry about damage threats, it doesn't matter if she has 100 health or infinite health because she's able to chase down. Sure dies, but in the course of getting a massive team fight victory for Team Liquid. Yeah, getting a triple kill in that fight was huge for Golden Glue. Piglet's still killless in this game, uh, but the upside 
is that Hustlin now has six of the ten kills. Everybody else just having one. Just says, okay, I will I will share with you one kill. Right over there, go, though, going low. Shields are there for oh! Matt. Oh! Matt. Walking to the opposite side. Matt going to the right. Right over to the left. And the fourth bullet finds him. Well, that's the C down. word, Achilles. That's the communication that just hasn't been developed for this roster, even though they have the English speaker and rain over. The body blocking needed to be on point. We've seen some great skirting of that ultimate in this tournament, but that uh, was not a highlight reel clip there for rain over. No, it was not. And with rain over going down, that's the tier two mid turret falling. Bottom. Now maybe the next target is the rest of Giants rotating down here yet again. And without rain over up, it's going to be considerably more difficult to hold this. It looks like they're just going to have to surrender this. Rain over now spawned, but doesn't even have the ultimate back up yet. And the Flourish is not going to root anybody. The Gravity Well will find Lore Low, but he's still a very tanky Nautilus, so he'll be fine for now. Giants have just been so smart. Keep rotating around turrets because you look down TL side. Who's killing these waves quickly? It's not going to be Piglet. Doesn't have Static Shiv yet. And even then, you know, obviously Vayne. Not the greatest in doing that. And then Golden goes pretty single target on Cassiopeia. Sure, you're spamming out Twin Fangs, but you're not using those to harass. You're not looking to zone. If your Flash is not up, you're not going to be able to go for an engage either. So if the engage threat of Rainover is unaccounted for and can look for a flank, then you back away as Giants. But if he's dead, you just go in there, get as many orders as you can, and watch this TL are kind of just completely helpless at stopping the structures from going down. Yeah. I mean, TL got an ace on Giants, and since then, Giants have gained a 1,000 gold. I mean, TL's hope here is getting more picks, taking a Baron, and then the Baron you know, making up for their lack of Siege and really finding their way forward through that particular objective. Yeah. We'll see if they can find their way to another Dragon that's getting ready to spawn in the next two minutes, or if Giants will be able to pick up their second one. Mount Drake, certainly something that TL could utilize at this point to help knock down these structures. Because they don't have a whole lot of turret damage. Rainover are going to be doing the most with that Trinity Force. Because no one's going to be building a locket, you look at suddenly this Syra, who of course has six of the 11 kills, has a lot of damage. Listen to me, going full damage Syra like she needs to. Maybe even avoid stuff next for the Spirit Visage of the World. Hustlin is a damage that needs to be respected. Yeah, they try to throw out the Grasping Roots and get Matt, but walks back the opposite way, and now TL will know. That Giants have infested their jungle, so they'll go ahead and peel back into the mid lane where it's relatively safe. But this is a very uh, poor spot to be in if you're Team Liquid. Don't want to go down in the first game. I mean, the game plan doesn't work when Piglet can't enter a side lane. And for many reasons, this, this game, mostly because of the smart rotations from Giants, but also Piglet being behind, He's going to look for a gank here, but he needs to really translate some of these because he's still scoreless in 24 minutes. Well, they get the pop up. It's going to be the shield thrown up there by Flaxius, but can he get the Keeper's Verdict? He does eject Piglet. Is it enough? Meanwhile. Oh, meanwhile, yeah. Baron going down. Lorlo can't even get the kill on the Poppy who has TP available. Right now, nice. no. Spike steals the Baron. He's going to pay for it with his life. Golden Glue goes in, has the exhaust coming up as well as the Curtain Call and the Chaos Storm ticking through. Matt. Just going to be the Sacrificial Lamb. Fourth shot comes through. Golden Blue getting hit up by that. He will fall in the end. So the three members of TL around the Baron pit, they get the steal, but they pay for it with their lives. And now Giants, they're just going to charge straight up the mid. Uh, Giants didn't respect. They weren't there to stop the Hecarim coming through. They knew that Ultimate was up and there was a chance, but no one was on top of it. Not that they had super many tools. With Poppy dead, it had to be Zyra stopping. It didn't happen. Baron buff minions, they really want to inhibit him. Yeah, TP coming through here as Flaxius tries to join in. Borlo goes really low, and now it's just Piglet trying to defend, but this turret is going to go down. Can they get the inhibitor is going to be the question. Looks like Giants don't even want to stick around to find, find out if it's possible. They're going to peel back, but now a TP from Lorlo. They're going to be really aggressive. Rainover charging down the lane as well. Can they find a fight? There's no Onslaught of Shadows. I don't know about this. No ultimate from the Nautilus. He's going to get pinned into the wall. Taking out a half HP already. Redemption coming through. Doesn't even life. matter. Upset. Just going to poke him out with that final shot. Lorlo gives away his life and his teleport for free. That engage would have made perfect sense if Giants overextended to get hits onto the inhibitor got poked a little bit, and then Nautilus cleans it up. Didn't happen here in a Mountain Drake. You know what? Okay, 10% more damage to turrets, but not really much out to call. Rainover's not warded. Uh, you know, there's no vision on him. He comes from the darkness, smites away. Mistake from Giants. No other way to put it. Cyrus should have been in position to first ward over and then look to interrupt. 
it didn't happen. They got some kills, they got an inhibitor turret. That's still nice for Giants, but this should never have happened. Poppy was tussling with two members in bot lane, was in range to interrupt the Nautilus, so it was always going to be just three members. And you got to dot your I's and cross your T's when you're trying to take Baron, and Giants did not do that. No, they did not, but they still get a bit of profit out of that. It doesn't look like TL is going to be able to utilize this Baron buff to acquire too many objectives on the map. They got finally got that Tier 1 in the bottom lane, uh, but the Tier 1 in mid still standing. The Waves did a lot of work on that Tier 2 in top, however, so Giants, that is very close to going down. Giants are happy footing here. They saw one turret go down yeah. TL. First instinct was to back away, but they're on a ward. They realize, hey, why not keep pushing? And even though they have short-range seeds, they have damage to turrets when there's no one around to mine them. So extra objective there just because Giants didn't make a clear call of what to do at the time. And yeah, I'm respecting that push in the bottom lane and they pay for it. So actually TL, uh, you know, kind of coming away with more than they should have. Well, Piglet has decided that wave clear is not a thing. There's no wave clear on TL's side. Sure, Cassie P is decent, but <laughs> that's about it. Helicopter uh, heck room. He's just going to sit in the middle of him and Ah, uh, yes. Sitting in the middle around. of him as Jin just kills him. Um, Got the wave. It's worth don't have the tank items for that yet. It's only still Negatron and Deadman's plate. So Deadman's is you're spending a lot of gold on more of the movement speed and the damage that comes from it rather than pure tankiness. It's not a Randuins that would have go a long way against the Lethality and Infinity Edge. And Golden oh Blue. Oh boy, Golden Blue gonna get popped up the gravity well there. Got to root him down. He's got a lot of heals, but the Chaos Storm is just sitting on top of him. One more tick might do it, but it expires actually. Upset is able to find Matt, but he is gonna go down as Piglet finally picks up his first kill of the game. Second kill of the this game, rather, big. as he finished off Knight. Piglet going low, gets caught out, right over Sun to the wall. Flashix trying to equalize the kill count here. Might be able to find a double, but the Condemn comes through, and Piglet's kiting it out quite well. Lorlo still a tanky monster in the middle of Giants, just CCing them up as best as he can, but right over in Piglet, it's so risky for them to enter. You can see the Sun to the wall, that will be the horse going down. But the Poppy is going to follow suit as Piglet is finally starting to go off. Dredge line not going to connect from Lorlo. And it looks like Mighty Baron Hustlin will make it out with their lives. But finally, this vein has come online in TL. They can pick up this tier one mid turret. Just not enough damage to take down the vein. Knight caught out of position. Big engage from Hecarim does pay off all in all. Because Piglet's the one picking up the gold. Going for this double zeal item build. That's very, very popular in solo queue. The reduced damage from the Phantom Dancer was very relevant there. Probably kept him alive or away from a sliver of health. Suddenly, buffs are being stolen. Suddenly, map control is being seeded. And you just see a couple of team fights going the way of Team Liquid and then winning the game despite Giants playing so, so well in the first 20 minutes. Now, let's take a look at that fight here. So, it looked like Golden Glue, you know, really caught up that this was going to be a, a catastrophic play for them. This time, it was an early channel of the, and a flash shield. It means that Golden Glue lives early. And crucially, the last shot from Upset doesn't kill the Cassie. Now she's out of the fight, so it's just like being killed. Nice engage from Raynor, but suddenly Knight is dead, suddenly Upset, who's fishing for a kill, is dead, and there's just no damage left. Sure, Hustler does some decent damage, but Piglet's pretty adept to taking him down. And Vayne has always been great at auto-attack canceling and getting away from a melee threat like Poppy, so no way to finish her off. These are the sort of fights where Vayne thrives, and you can't afford to have another handful of these if you're Giants and want to take down game one. Yeah, I think a little bit unnecessary for Rado to have died there, but albeit maybe it faded the Poppy back in so they could get that third kill. Uh, either way, Piglet finally putting three on the board from that exchange. And there's the has that, Yep, has the, the static shift done. Now that no Magic Mantle gonna be looking for a QSS. Rado we're gonna get caught though. Guardian Angel is there. Has the onslaught of shadows. Can he make it out as the question goes over the wall, but it doesn't matter that empowered auto attack from Knight will finish him off mid-cast. And now, with Rain over dead, fortunately, there's not much. Fortunately for TL, there's not much the Giants uh, could really take right now. Baron not up for a minute, 20. Dragon not for two minutes, just about. So TL Hecarim's. just going to have to peel back and try to defend this inhibitor. And it's definitely the Hecarim problem where you get a fast start, you get your Trinity Force, and you're like, yeah, got two tank items. But you see, the Jin has Infinity Edge. The Lethality is now scaled. He's got attack speed, and he's got Lord Dominic. So you're still going to be dead if your Rain over dies twice. Guardian Angel, now no longer relevant. There's the inhibitor that they prepped earlier. And for every step forward, there's a couple of steps to the side or back from Team Liquid. Yep. So losing that inhibitor going to be pretty crucial now with Baron spawning in 50 seconds. They're really going to have to prep these waves carefully if they want to be able to contest that objective as well as get some vision control. They do have some wards in the pit and in the river, but looks like those might be getting cleared out at the moment. Can't tell if Upset is, yep, sticking out one. So they're getting some vision back. Endlessly amusing that Poppy and Nautilus have the same items. Uh, only a Doran's Ring traded for a Corrupting Potion. I've been saying it time and time again. 
it's like spring all over again. They're pretty good items, it turns out. They've been tweaked since then in terms of cost efficiency and gold. And but they're still wonderful. They still make tanks do damage, which uh, is pretty happy times. <laughs> but not to each other. Never to each other. No. I mean, we did see some Lolo solo kills on Nautilus, but uh, I'm going to say that's an exception, not the rule. Yeah. Take that one with a grain of salt. But, you know, that tier 2 turret and top still not going down. Waves have been hammering away at it as they crash. We can see now Giants moving in. Using the sweeper to clear out that blue trinket ward, but they'll get a couple down uh, for them. Interesting. So actually, you don't normally catch this because your eyes are elsewhere, but Hustlin bought Rylai, sold it for Leandries. So not for Leandries, for... Uh, Luden's for Echo. the Luton's Echoes. So getting my L's mixed up there. So really adjust the build for just pure burst damage. They want to take down the squishy vein as fast as possible. Piglet's returned to the build, so still no Guardian Angel, so still no uh, QSS. Uh, not demanded in this game like it was perhaps in other games, but thought maybe that would be it, but it's not. Dredgeline comes in, they find Mighty Bear. As that Guardian Angel, they almost pop him. Not able to find it yet. Stranglethorn's not going to pop anybody up. Ultimate from Laura Low. Catches upset, but he doesn't take a whole lot of damage. Now TL starting to kite back down the mid lane. Everyone on their side, relatively healthy. Mighty Bear going to come out with the Recall has that Void Rush so he can come back. All nine flashes available, so he's waiting for someone to really feel it and go for engage for now. Right. Only the Nautilus Ultimate is the, you know, consequential investment in that fight. Yeah, exhaust is burned out as well. Or Exhaust available as well, rather. So now we can see Giants moving up towards this Baron. Oh, they find Matt. He's dead. And Hustlin's just going to take that one. He says, now, don't worry, guys. I got it. They kind of made their really big misplay around the Baron the last time, allowed Rainover to steal. This time, Rainover will be in vision, but risky stuff here from Giants. That is Lorlo walking up into the front lines. Her call going to be opened up, looking for Golden Blue or Piglet, but Lorlo is doing a better job of body blocking than Matt did the first time around. Flashing's going to go ahead. Nice sidestep there with a the flash for Golden Blue. Trying to burn through this pop. He gets stunned into the wall. But pop him up. Lorlo's ultimate coming back up. And now Rainover coming in on the bottom side. Going low. Upset's going to take him out. And Piglet gets locked up. Knocked up by Mighty Bear. And he goes down. And all that TL can get for it is the poppy. And it's a big mistake on the side of TL. Their threats need to be grouped. Cassiopeia is actually really good at peeling for Vayne because of the threat of the petrifying gaze and all the damage he does in short range. But instead, Peanut was looking for an angle into the fight in the mid lane. Couldn't get into it. And then on the other side, it was very much Golden Glue and Lolo grouped as a flanking threat for those two. So they didn't get anything from it. They turn on to Baron and it should be easy stuff. Yeah, there it is. It goes down. Matt not going to be able to get close enough to try to find a seal. And the second Baron goes through. This time, the Giants. The big story here is you have to watch the threats. Watch where Piglet is and watch where the Cassiopeia is. So Lorlo works out that his job is to zone for the other hyper carry, which is the Cassiopeia in this station. They kite upwards. For now, Piglet's like already altered. He can't find it uh, somewhere into the fight that he has to respect the gravity field. Rainover goes in, but is still not tanky. Let's be clear. Hecarim only gets so tanky. And at this point, Nautilus and Cassiopeia are out of the fight. They turn on to Piglet. One CC, he's dead predictably. Well fought by Giants. They had to really think through that engage because if they somehow let Golden Glue and Piglet run free, they've already felt the brunt of the damage they can put out. Yep. So Giants now going to be in a nice spot. Going to power those super creeps charging down the mid lane and maybe start trying to knock down those Nexus turrets or just go for this remaining outer turret in the top lane as the wave is already kind of pushed up towards that side of the map. They're in a very good spot, but TL still not down yet. Only a 3,000 gold difference at 35 minutes. One fight can change the tides of this entire game. Actually, a teleport from Poppy into the lane, so no sort of flank teleport here. They're just trying to make a fast rotation, but... Yeah, not going to be going for a split either onto that inhibitor in the Last inhibitor turn in the bottom side of the map. Matt clearing out as best he can with the mantra Qs. They're low going to get rooted up. Right over looking for the flank. There's a couple wards there, so they do spot him out. He's not going to be able to clear them. As the ultimate has a Guardian Angel up for himself, so it gives him a little bit of tankiness. Just feels like one positioning mistake will decide this game. Piglet or Golden Glue get taken down. So do the hopes of Team Liquid. Giants trying to set up the siege. They definitely have a siege advantage over their opponents when we've hopped on about the lack of wave clear from TL. And TL probably smart. Yeah. Not try and take the bait. Just give up the outer turret, the inner turret, sorry, in top lane. Yeah, very intelligently just going to so go ahead and surrender that one. No, he's not spotted. Still looking for the flank here. They have not seen him yet. Hustlin 
Around to the side, Kern Cole opened up. Piglet's already jumped Back out. Time. He's gonna likely have to back off Rainover. Shows himself in the back, takes a good burst of damage. And that's gonna be start going down against the dredge line in onto Flashits. And he's taking a damage. hell of a lot, actually. One more hit from Piglet actually could have killed him. At that time, dredge line comes through yet again. Rainover still trying to find a way in, but again, he's just getting chunked out. Golden Blue getting popped up in the strength of the Lords, but he's still alive and able to kite into the backside. That's going to be two kills coming in for Piglet so far as he takes out the pop. That is the working. Tyra. Guardian Angels goes down as Rainover gets popped. Knight, the dredge line connects. Rainover finds the kill. It's just upset and Mighty Bear trying to get out of here with a tier alive, but Piglet is hot on their heels and has to respect the damage from this Jin. Mighty Bear going to get rooted, stunned to the wall by the Condemned. That's four for TL. That's going to be the fifth one coming through. His upset goes down. Golden Blue picking it up. That's going to be the ace. And Team Liquid have swung this right back in their favor. And we previewed it, Achilles. If Cassiopeia and Vayne stay alive, there's a tank front line in front of them. Vaxish is not tanky against Vayne. It was actually a really nice W from Victor that stopped Vaxish from dying earlier. Piglet had held his ult to this point. Really nice kiting around. And suddenly, Poppy dies. And they're like, crap. We have no one to close the distance onto this Vayne. Vayne and Cassiopeia put out the damage. Every target that's acquired is taken down. No one goes down of consequence on the side of Giants. And this game, bone wide open. That it is. TL, though, not able to find anything off the back side of that engagement. Not in a position to move in and take any turrets. See, they are moving up into this mid lane at the moment. Still have three seconds on Mighty Bear, 10 on upset before he comes back up. They're just trying to see if somebody wants to walk into the jungle, particularly Hustlin. If you get rid of him, that's a huge AoE zone control that they completely negate. And the question that I have to ask now, regardless of uh, the victory or loss here for TL, is was the Vayne pick and everything it did to warp the early game worth it? Because this is just the reality. It's sure, she is that late game team fighting beast, but they seeded multiple turrets. A different team might have been cleaner in closing out the game. They got a chance, Baron, just because Giants disrespected the potential smite steal from Rainover. And if the game had continued in the pace that it did when those three turrets were going down, this vein would never have hit the rift, so it's just, is it worth oh reaching? Boy, Speaking Golden of reaching. Gonna get jumped on. Your call shot's gonna get blocked right now. Mighty Bear might have been no more than he chew. That's gonna be a kill coming through from Piglet, the Redemption. Coming down, but not gonna find a whole lot. Actually, it was the Strangle Thorns, and they're not gonna get much off the backside of that. Piglet is weak, but he's got the life steal, so he's gonna be charging himself back up as best as he can at Giants. Hiding down through this joke, but here comes right over. He has the onslaught, a huge petrifying gaze as they catch the poppy and knight. He goes down, and Piglet is just chasing onto the Zyra. Oh Look at that crit, two shots, and he goes down. Piglet coming up with a double kill in that fight. The rest of Giants just upset, and Flashix have to scramble the GA pop. He's going to try to get out of here, but Rainover is hot on his heels, and TL are just knocking down the turrets. I mean, if they just occupy the time of Poppy, there's nothing really left. It's only a Jin who has no ultimate. How many objectives can TL take here? They want to end the game, and there's a very good chance they can do so. And they just go for it, though. It's 10 seconds left on Mighty Bear, 20 on Knight, and 25 on Hustle, and Rainover still keeping Flashix busy. The first turret getting ready to go down. They might have just done it, TL. Knocking down the second Nexus turret. There it is. It's exposed. Mighty Bear coming up, but I don't think he's going to be able to do a damn thing. The Nexus falls and game one goes to Team Liquid taking down Giants. Team Liquid just about stuck the landing, but man, did they take so many risks in doing so. I think Giants, when they watch that one back, will see the areas where they could have turned on the pace because for so much of this game, 75 to 80%, Piglet was a passenger. She, he could do nothing on the vein in the